Hey everyone, Jason Shepard here, RemotePilot101.com, and I have some exciting news to share with you all about the future of waivers and authorizations. But first, let's start with where are we right now in that process? Would you believe that the process is 100% manual? You're wondering, going, why does this take 90 to 100 days to get my authorization or my waiver? It's a manual process, but the story gets better. You know that waiver, that authorization form you fill out? That's simply just a contact form that pushes all that information to an FAA email. That FAA email then goes in and gets sorted manually by a, by a human. You can imagine hundreds of emails in there, and that one individual goes in and forwards the emails to where they need to go. It's just an email that's manually sorted. Now, it's also kind of strange that when you submit, you don't get any kind of hey, congratulations, thanks, you'll hear back from us anytime soon, you get really no immediate response. And the FAA is aware of, that's not normal to not get a, hey, this was successfully submitted, but we're working on this. So what they're doing is they're in the process of creating reference numbers. So you'll get an authorization, a waiver reference number, so you can kind of follow up and track that process. And in a future video, I'll be sharing more about how we're gonna use those reference numbers. Now, how this process actually is working today is through something called facility maps. And the FAA has facility maps for some of the United States. And what a facility map is, it breaks down the airspace into little square quadrants. And each quadrant is given a value, such as in this quadrant, you could operate up to 100 feet. In this quadrant, you could operate up to 200 feet. So when you submit for that authorization, they're taking your longitude and latitudinal coordinates, they're putting it onto the facility map, and they're going, oh, that falls into this quadrant, the maximum altitude there is 200 feet. So then they go back and they either approve it up to the 200 feet, but maybe you're asking for 400 feet and they can't quite approve that. So they have this criteria criteria, but it's all still a very manual process. But these facility maps work to really, they can give us a faster approval because they've already worked in that airspace before they have that facility map spelled out. Now, if you, there's not a facility map for your area, they literally take those longitude and longitudinal coordinates, realize there's not a facility map for that area. They then go to the local controller, ATC, and say, hey, listen, there's a, a drone, it's an Inspire one that wants to operate at this day to this time in this area of your airspace, can you do it? Well, and then they look and go, well, first off, what's an Inspire one? Is what most of these controllers are saying. How fast is it? How, how, how big is it? How, how high can it go? What, what are we looking at here? And they're trying to figure out this performance data and it slows down the process even further because we've added more people to it. Well, let me share with you now really where the future is going. The future is in a system called LANCE. LANCE stands for Low Altitude Authorization Notification Capability. LANCE is notification software. You see, the, the whole purpose of an authorization isn't to keep you out. They simply just want to know you're there. They don't want to keep you out of the airspace. They just want to know you're there. You're, you can be in that airspace, right? That's why they have these quadrants for, they just want to know you're there. And that's why we have this authorization process. So through Lance, picture the future with me here now. Third parties are going to be your gateway to Lance, potentially via an API. Imagine this, and this is maybe Jason just really dreaming here, but let me see if I can predict the future. Imagine if DJI had an API through Lance, the notification system. And you're sitting there, you're in this particular airspace, and you want to request to operate in that airspace. You would look and you'd see on Lance that, okay, I'm uh, this quadrant is up to 100 feet in this area, that's fine, I'm just doing real estate photos, I'm just inspecting crops, I'm just doing a, a roof inspection, I'm a home inspector, whatever it may be, I only need up to, I don't need anything greater than 100 feet. That's that quadrant that you see on the facility map that you looked at via Lance. You're sitting there in the DJI app and you go ahead and say yes, I can fly within that criteria. I don't need to exceed 100 feet. Lance then sends the notification out 
to the local controller, the ATC facility that controls that airspace. They look at that and say, oh, okay, so this operator can operate in that quadrant and stay below 100 feet, that's fine. And they use that to then push an approval back to you. The DJI app recognizes that. They unlock your drone in that airspace right there and you're now operating in that airspace doing that. It's almost instantaneous. Lance is our notification system to really make that happen. Think of Lance really as a flight plan. In manned aviation, we do a flight plan almost before each and every flight or we do our due diligence. Lance is going to facilitate that for us as well as we work to create these truly flight plans. Can you operate within this criteria? If the answer is yes, you send that and say yes, you tell Lance I can do that and Lance sends it off to the appropriate person who can say yes or no to that or you know have some give or take there and Lance is really that vehicle between you and the FAA, the controllers, whatever it may be for that circumstance. That's authorization, that's airspace stuff. What about waivers now and where is that going? Well, not a whole lot's going to really change. It's still going to be a manual process. Waivers still need to be you know, manually reviewed because there's performance standards that need to be met. And it takes a human to go down and make sure and check all those boxes and see the contingency plans. Now, the FAA has said they're working on, they will create an easy renewal process. So your waiver for night flying is good for two years, let's say, whatever they have proved you for. We'll use two years as an example. Two years comes around, they're going to contact you and say, listen, would you like to renew this as is? Do you need to make changes and have an easy renewal process so you don't have to start over with that waiver process again? There is some great things on the horizon for authorizations for waivers and really, Lance is a big part of it. We're going to be keeping you up to date. If you're a current customer of ours here at RemotePilot101.com, we're going to be taking this knowledge and even taking it further inside of the course. I'll be sending you some more emails about that as well so you can learn more about Lance. We're going to be doing tutorials inside of Lance, showing actual facility maps so you can really see it for yourself. It's going to be very, very exciting, but you have to be a RemotePilot101.com customer to see all that. So I imagine you are excited to see you in there. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. We'll see ya. You've seen online that the Part 107 knowledge test isn't easy. It's not something you can go in alone. Let us be your guide. Let our 57 full 4K training videos really hold your hand and take you through the course step by step to better understand complex topics like airspace, charts, METARs and TAFs and aviation weather. You're able to test on and see the actual FAA Part 107 questions. And lastly, we're going to help you submit your application to the FAA. Visit RemotePilot101.com to learn more.